Hello everyone, I'm Katherine Barrett with O'Reilly Media. Thank you for joining us for today's webcast, the Facebook application ecosystem, why some thrive and most don't. Today's presenter, Shelley Farnham, is a co-founder and social architect at Waggle Labs, which develops innovative social applications. Shelley received her PhD in social psychology at the University of Washington, and she performed research and advanced prototyping for seven years at Microsoft Research, focusing on social networking, global social coordinate, and personal analytics. In 2005, she left to consult with startups and to teach the social web at the University of Washington before she co-founded Waggle Labs in 2007. And now I'll turn the presentation over to Shelley. Yeah. Okay, um, well thanks everyone for coming today. Glad you could join us for our webinar. Uh, as Kevin mentioned, I'm Shelley Farnham, and um, I have a background in social psychology. Uh, I spent a number of years at Microsoft Research before venturing on my own. Uh, we started Waggle Labs about uh, about a year ago, and I just wanted to uh, to explain a little bit uh, how I ended up uh, performing the study of the Facebook application ecosystem. Uh, um, so, so yeah. Um, well, we've been exploring a couple, you know, a number of projects. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we're, we're only about a year old now, um, and we've been trying to figure out what do we want to pursue and how do we want to pursue it. Uh, basically, we uh, are specializing in leveraging social networking technologies to enhance face-to-face -face interactions. And one of our main projects is uh, Pathable.com, which is a private community for conferences and events. Um, the idea is to have an online directory social recommendation system with enhanced badging. And one of the questions that we had, which you know, I think a lot of us have, is whether or not we should build a Facebook application or not. There are uh, many, many events within the uh, space of Facebook. Um, and so, you know, as a small startup company, we don't want to build an entire network from scratch. And so one of the questions is, can we effectively leverage Facebook to build um, a social networking application. Um, and when I was at, you know, exploring this question, I was looking around and I found an O'Reilly Radar report called the Facebook Application Platform that was published in 2007. Um, and they're, uh, they're noting that in the time since uh, the Facebook application um, platform was launched, um, something like 10,000 applications have been added to the system. Nonetheless, very few of those applications actually um, generated enough traffic to be you know, self-sufficient, usually through uh, revenue models. So here's a you know here's a close-up of that image um, from that uh, radar O'Reilly report showing that in the top you know very small percent of the top applications actually generated uh, daily usage um, in the tens of thousands, let alone the millions. And so you know the question. Uh, that I had was, well, why, why is this? Um, you know, I, you know, big part of my approach has always been to um, do deep dives into analyzing social systems when making design decisions. And so I actually asked the O'Reilly crew um, if I could borrow or <laughs> consume their data and actually take a closer look and further examine the Facebook application ecosystem to help answer this question for myself and for others, whether or not it was the right environment to be creating a, uh, an application. Uh, and aside from wanting to know for our own applications, you know, why do we really care about this space, um, you know, there's a lot, uh, this is a, a great visualization that Dave McClure put together um, called the Social Graph Platform Awards. It's actually um, extremely difficult to, you know, uh, create an entirely complete social graph. So a social graph is generally the set of all the people and, and how they are, are connected. Um, and so as people are um, creating social graphs uh, and, and, and achieving the critical mass required to be an effective one, um, very few people are actually be able to enter uh, the space from scratch. And so, you know, we're all, you know, watching very closely to see who are going to be the winners in this space, particularly from application perspective. So looking at, uh, looking at Facebook and thinking about you know, what does it mean to be a social graph platform, um, 
what can we what can we learn from doing a deeper analysis? Anyway, one of the questions I had was, you know, do, is it really a platform um, versus is it a marketing? You know, should we be thinking of it as a marketing vehicle? There's a lot of money potentially to be made in the social networking space from advertising. It's uh, uh, the dominant uh, revenue model for applications within the Facebook uh, system. Um, also thinking about, um, you know, what is the difference between a social networking platform versus a more gen general social technology platform? What kind of behaviors are people really exhibiting within the space? Is it primarily engaged in the activity of maintaining and developing social relationships, which is what um, I would call social networking, versus more generally ch social technology, um, sharing, collaboration. There's a lot of social behaviors that occur um, more generally in, in social technology platform. And then the other question um, that I really wanted to address um, was getting a better sense of who is actually in um, in Facebook, um, looking at how people actually use the applications and getting a sense for, are, are applications that are targeting a specific type of population going to um, fare better than other kinds? You know, is it, is it really just uh, for teenagers? As we observe that Facebook migrates increasingly um, away from being just for college students and more towards the general population, um, are applications that are more, um, say, professional, um, more around shopping, more targeting at, you know, parents also going to thrive within that system. Um, so what I did was, you know, as, as I mentioned, um, I, I was able to get this uh, data set from the O'Reilly Radar crew. Um, what they had been doing is scraping the directory of uh, applications uh, where there's some, there's some basic usage data that's provided for each application, such as daily usage, percent usage, uh, and they've been doing that for a number of months. And so the, the, the study that I performed spanned between September and November. And what I did was I took that set of uh, data of, of all the applications and how they're being used and then selected the top 260 of these applications, the top 260 successful applications during that um, three-month period, and then just actually installed all of them and did a deep dive looking at them, coding them on various uh, dimensions. Uh, and then I also randomly selected 80 failing applications. These are applications um, that uh, had sufficient numbers, um, up to 100 daily, uh, daily users, um, but didn't make it into that, you know, it wouldn't be, would be classified as, as failing versus succeeding. And then looking at, you know, what features about within these systems to appear to be instigating growth along the social graph, and then what types of applications um, were really thriving within that system. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and start talking about um, the, the results of this analysis. Uh, the, first, the first thing I need to say um, is, uh, you know, how, how exactly do you measure success? Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, application directory had a number of potential measures, such as total active users, percent active users, how many times people installed it, how many times people reviewed the application. I really wanted to see which of these measures most predicted growth. Um, it was definitely the case that it was uh, daily active users had the most predictive abilities. So these are correlations, which uh, you may or may not be familiar with, but uh, most of the activity in growth was predicted by daily active usage. And so I decided to really focus on that as this sort of you know, measure of success, also in part because um, it's in daily active usage that people are coming in. If you, if you are using a revenue model for your, for your application, um, an advertising re revenue model, then that people are actually there every day is very important to you. Um, so an important thing to understand is uh, what does it mean to grow virally in a, in a social graph? Theoretically, if you sort of look at uh, the maximal potential growth within a network, uh, if you, everyone logs in, say, once a day, um, and they can send the application to up to 20 of their friends each of those days, then the application can spread extremely rapidly along this social graph.